I decided we were going to do a surprise live stream to give a little update on my Night Gold project of Armadillidae and Vulgari. These are descendants from a group that I collected uh, a long time ago, and I have some really fantastic specimens I'd like to show you. I, I think they're pretty fantastic anyway. These here are some coals that I just pulled out. So these are not, these are not the A grade uh, specimens here. These are not my holdbacks. These are culls, but they're not really B grade either. I mean, some of these are pretty, pretty nice. Hello, dark reptiles, welcome. But some of them are less, you know, they have less of the expression. Some of them are, are okay. And so this is, this is the cull level. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably let go of some of these. I, I might go through it and, and take a couple out, some of the higher quality ones here. But uh, I just wanted to do a kind of a short surprise live stream today and uh, tell you how it's going. The, ori the original specimens were collected in a canyon near my home. Uh, I was noticing some with higher nor than normal yellow markings and I start started to collect some. And then I noticed that, uh, uh, well, then my son noticed one that was almost completely yellow. So we collected that one. Look at the, the markings on this one right in the center of the screen. It's got some pretty cool stuff going on. So uh, we decided to collect a number of them, and we got a couple that were pretty high yellow and then some that were less high yellow. But uh, collect them all. Uh, not them all. We collected maybe 10 or 12 of them. Brought them home, and I begin attempting to line breed. And we've determined that, from what we can tell, the males don't have... The markings usually here, the yellow markings, but uh, females tend to, so it's, it's interesting how it works out. So I see we have Dark Reptiles, Reggie, Chimkin Nugget, Vince's Outdoors Adventures, and Newt's Commander here. Excellent. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, once in a while, I figure it's, it's probably a good idea to mix it up a little bit and do a Friday live stream, right? Not too often, uh, but it's, it's kind of fun. To do one, so let's let's take a look at some of these if we we can. Just trying to get a little bit of focus there. There's toilet peat, excellent. Maybe I should start putting these start putting these in, and we'll let them crawl around and do their thing as we watch them and as we talk. So anyway, this is not a just a single gene mutation. This is something else going on. Let me see. Are you able to see? No, probably not. I need to see if I can lower the lower this just a little bit. How can I do that? I'm going to try to do that so that you can see them much better as I as I do this. I'm actually going to try to put some of them in a smaller container and get right up close. Hey, Vince, if I have time, we'll try to do that. That'd be cool. Let's see if we can see some. Let's see here. This, is that going to focus for us? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's maybe. That's not too bad. You can kind of see what's going on there. These are the culls, like I said. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let some of these culls go. We'll look at some of the nicer culls, and then we'll look at the, the stock, the, all the holdbacks that I'm keeping. See, I would call that one right there. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice specimen. Let's see if we can get some up close action on that one. Oh yeah, see that's that's decent. You can see some some good yellow markings on there. And oh, that one's not bad either. Let's see what we can see here. Hmm. Actually, I'm, I'm realizing I'm putting these in the wrong bin. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that. So, just one second. Yeah, I ended up letting some go. I didn't really mean to let go. Oh, well. Uh...
put those in a different bin. That's what I wanted to do. Sorry. It's going to take a second. Having a little bit of problem. See, uh, getting these over here. Sorry about that. Mm. Okay, let's look at the really nice ones. We've got some really nice specimens in here. So hopefully the focus is okay. Hello, Therapod Hunter. Some of these are, are males and are just going to look completely normal, of course. The males don't, don't carry the trait, or they don't express the trait. Uh, and so that's, that's fine. I don't expect a whole lot there in terms of male coloration. But let's look at some of these that I have in here. That is a pretty nice one there, I would say. But look at look at the coverage on some of these. Like the pattern on that one right in the middle of the screen there. It's a pretty good one. That's a nice one too. Pretty cool. I see that Braden is here, Therapod Hunter, Itty Bitty Ladybug, Zero Cool. Let's just let's see if I can pull them out one by one. We'll take a look. Look at each one and see what we can see for a little bit. So here is one. One with a piece of sphagnum moss. And thank you, Jeff. They're coming along. And Lucas, welcome. And Therapod Hunter. Oh, I, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm actually... Uh, Kind of tired today, but uh, that's okay. It was worth it. Uh, had a very busy day yesterday, but it was very good things happening. Some of which we will find out about fairly soon. And there's young lad. Nice. I'm having a little bit of trouble focusing. I apologize for that. I don't know why it's uh, having trouble. But I'm going to release this one here. Lose my little... It's nice to have the dark to compare them to. And, and I'm trying to make that work, but it keeps falling out. Let's see if this one will look any better, huh? Let's try it. There, there we're getting it. Getting a good look, if, as long as we can keep it in focus, which is apparently more complicated than uh, one would expect. Peppers and glowworms? Oh, thank you. They're kind of Getting there, aren't they? But the focus, what is, what is up with the focus? I don't know. Oh, mm, mm, mm. maybe we'll do a little bit better now if we can get this one to do its thing. Okay, so Jeff, you're wondering about the Brew Death Training Beetle Breeding Project. I re recently did produce a, a new beetle. I don't know if anybody's, if everybody's seen that, but I'll, I'll see if I can share the newest beetle pretty soon. See, there's uh, Sean Meister. Excellent. Glad to have you here. And Jamie, yes, hello Jamie. I am doing a live on Friday. I, I do that once in a while. It's kind of once in a blue moon thing. Um, I do this instead of my main video on those days when I do that. Uh, but it's it's kind of a rare thing. I'm gonna just put a whole bunch of the, the nice ones in here. We're gonna take a look at them. Okay, and then after we'll look at the new Blue Death Fainting Beetle. I think that's the first video anyone's seen it seen it of it as an adult so yeah this is going to work better i think look at those there we go those are looking nice yes lucas i think you're right it often does help because then you're not looking at other stuff uh I, I, that's a good idea if i can get it to take up the majority of the frame maybe i can get it to focus okay so lawson's animals hello um, the garter snakes are doing well. Uh, the female is getting really fat. So I think she may actually be producing some babies pretty soon. Um, hopefully by May or maybe early June. We'll see about that. Blue Basin Aquatics, welcome. 
And Jeff, once I get enough of them, I may. I still have to look into permitting for the species, but I'm hoping to produce enough to get them into the captive breeding population. Uh, I'm not producing enough to do that yet, but uh, I hope to get there eventually. What was the bioactive mix you used for them? Just wondering, I can't remember if you put it in your video or not. For the garter snakes, I used the bioactive mix from uh, the BioDude. It was um, his Terra Savannah, I believe. Oh, I got some of these crawling out, and I don't want them all to crawl out quite yet, because there's some really nice ones in here. Here, let's take a look at these two. Put those back in. And there's there's one particularly I want you to see that's not, not in evidence yet, so just a moment. If I can, hopefully it didn't crawl, hasn't crawled out yet. Uh, where is it? There's, there's some really nice ones, but uh, I'm not sure I see it at the moment. It must have crawled out. But look at these. There's some really nice ones in here. Um, hello, Lee. I think it was terra, terra firma. It was Lawson's Animals. Definitely terra firma. That, that's one of the nicest ones right there that's trying to crawl out. I want to put it back in. I don't want it to get out too soon. Can't let them desiccate. So, theropod hunter's question there. Which isopod species that are not yet in the hobby would like to be introduced? I think some of the Marulanella. There's probably a lot of Marulanella out there that are really nice that need to be in the hobby and aren't yet. Very cool. And some of the nicer ones that are in the hobby right now are Marulanella. So I would like to see what we've got there in addition. Oh, here's one of the ones I wanted to show you. And I think this is one that actually not from the line that I started, the one that's now upside down. Uh, it's got kind of a whiter color to it rather than gold, but it, it's super cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that one. It's almost metallic looking. And really like it. Jamie... Finally found babies in magic potion last week. Took six long months. Mine took a long time too. I think uh, since October. So what is that? Yeah, about six months too. Right around there. How the morning gecko is doing, dark reptiles? They are doing great. I have three hatchlings. Got a waiting list for hatchlings. So the three are going to the first person on the list. I think that person wanted three. As soon as the, the youngest one is... Um, as soon as the youngest one is... Uh, no, a little bit older. Uh, so, young lad, remind me again what's going on with the Armadillidium vulgari. Shu, Kudanai, hello. And salamanders. The only salamander we have is an axolotl, which is, of course, a type of neotenic aquatic close relative of the tiger salamander. That's the only one I've got. But I do have an axolotl. It's my daughter's axolotl, but it lives in my house. I help her take care of it. Oh, excellent, Jeff. Baby Porcelio Scaber Dalmatian. That's always exciting. Any, any isopod babies are exciting. doesn't matter how common they are, in my estimation. So, um, Sean Meister, I will probably have some culls uh, posted to the website pretty soon. Not, not this level, but some of the lower grade ones posted to the website pretty soon. I can't give an exact... Uh, exact date, but probably pretty soon, probably in the next month or so, maybe less. Um, it's just that uh, I have someone who requested some specifically, and so I'm trying to, you know, balance all that out uh, before I post them to the website specifically. That, I guess that's, that's the deal. Oh, Dark Reptiles, remember you said that you're going to move to a, a place where you had more space for your critters, which is awesome. I wish I could say the same. It's not a tiny house, but at the same time, I, I only have one room for the critters, and then there's some spread around. Um, okay. All right, Sean. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, send me an email, and I think we can probably arrange something for the lower grade ones. They're going to be more expensive than the B grade I posted, because they are higher quality ones, but they're not going to be too crazy. I do like the spotted salamanders, and, and the newts. I've kept newts before. True. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep that going, Sean. I am going to be 
I've been working on renovating the website, but none of it shows up on the website yet because I'm going to migrate it all over once I'm done. Um, so, there we go. Um, young lad, they haven't had babies in a long while, and one dies like every week or so. Just don't want them all to die, so I'm wondering if you just let them free. Well, if you collected them locally, I guess you could do that. I'm just, I'm wondering why they're dying. I, did we talk about your setup already? And thank you, Zero Cool. Hello, Moon over Miami. <laughs> Armadillity and Werner Eye. Yeah, those are very, very cool. Do you have the orange ones, Therapod Hunter? Yeah, the dairy cows, they just can't stop them. Um, well, Jeff, I do have my original trio of Dendrobates leucomelis, and they do occasionally produce uh, you know, tadpoles for me. I'm not actively breeding them, but when I, when I see tadpoles, I pull them and raise them, of course. Uh, I don't have any available right now. I haven't... Uh, haven't pulled tadpoles for a while. But if you're going to get Leucomelis or Aratus, I would highly recommend Leucomelis. They're a lot more bold and active. Aratus look just as cool in a different way, of course, but they're just not as active. Uh, they're not as bold. Oh, Lawson's animals, have fun herping. I would, I would go herping in a heartbeat. Even uh, being a bit tired today, I, I, would, I would do that in a heartbeat. So... Go ahead and enjoy that. I hope to hear about it in a future stream, how well they, that went. And glad to hear your African software rats are doing well, Dark Reptiles. And, okay, I'm going to set these down. I want to show you the new beetle. The new uh, blue death fainting beetle, the newest one. This one emerged. Maybe you saw my recent video on uh, the... Uh, pupa that I had surface pupated. Okay, young lad, yeah, I think I remember that and can't figure this out. I don't know. Maybe if I were there and I could look, I could give you some more information. But not being there, I wish I could help. I, I would like to. I'm just not sure what to tell you. It's hard to say because it does sound like we've kind of covered the bases. But well, we're going to let those high yellows crawl away. And I'm going to show you this beetle, which is feigning death because I just messed with it. But this is what a blue death feigning beetle looks like, when apparently, when it has surface pupated. And it is on, uh, it hasn't uh, completely gotten its color yet. It's got this kind of coppery color to it. It's starting to darken up more. Than it was. Um, hmm. And when was the last time you changed the substrate, young lad? I'm just wondering if that'll cast any light on it. He totally looks pretty convincing. But yeah, I really, I really find the coloration quite fascinating. And this one really, really plays dead a lot. He'll sit for a long time. Okay, thank you, Sean. Excellent. Does anyone want a video on how to breed African software rats? Oh, sure. Yeah, I wish I could help you, young lad, but... Generally, I find out when that, is, that issue is going on, um, we've got uh, an issue with... Uh, well, I mean, it could be a lot of things. Young lad, it could be a uh, substrate. But I, I, maybe we already talked about that too. Yeah, it's really exciting that these are breeding in captivity now. I love that. Here, I'm going to pop over to the, uh, the desert beetle enclosure. A couple of people have asked about that. And we'll take a peek. Why not? We'll see what's going on in there. Sometimes it's not very, not very active. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. It's going to look funny for a minute here. Hmm. Let's see if anybody's moving around. When I see a... Like my Desimula um, Nocturna. There's a Desimula Gloriosa. So we'll see if we can get a little bit of activity. 
They look like they're they're doing some basking. And oh, see, he's moving around a little bit now. I don't see any of the beetles active in here right now. I do have a couple of the velvet ants running around, but uh, no beetle activity at the moment. Maybe I can look around and see what I can find. Yeah, the substrate change is probably a good idea, young lad. I just, uh, I'm not sure why it's not helping. So Cedric, excellent question. It's not a species I've kept. I've kept a couple of cube bars. I have rubber duckies and I have uh, red tigers, but that is it. That's all I've got. Oh, there's one of the red velvet ants, a uh, Desimutilla vestida, in the corner up there. That's, hmm. Pretty little critters. I don't know if it was just the camera, but it looked like there were hints of red between the peaks of the exoskeleton on the death vending beetle. Is that accurate? Um, Probably because it looked more red when it when it uh, eclosed, it really did, and I think it's just kind of losing that over time. Check in for some of the beetles, everybody. Here is a rough death fanning beetle. I made some of the velvet ants mad as I was digging around, I guess. Oh, sorry. They're making angry noises. I'm just checking around because I've got several beetles in here, different types. Got some dune buggies, some bugs in cyberspace. Got some uh, diabolical ironclad beetles in here from bugs in cyberspace. Just kind of wondering where they're hiding out. They're pretty cool, but I'm not seeing any right now. That's interesting. Why not? And Jeff, yeah, yeah, they're 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 pretty cool. Here's here's one of my bigger velvet ants. Where is she? Oh, there she is. That's Desimutilla occidentalis. She's a big one. She was sleeping, and I kind of woke her up, and now she's kind of upset. It seems she was stridulating a little bit, which is probably my fault. I probably upset her just a wee bit. So, Cedric, do Armadillidium gestroi need much ventilation? Generally, Armadillidium do, but um, Armadillidium gestroi seem to be okay with a little less than some of the others. And, uh, yeah, I would say... Probably less than, say, Armadillidium vulgari or Armadillidium klugai. Um, are they bothered by tapping on the glass? Um, I just generally kind of avoid it and with the assumption that most things probably are bothered by it. There may be things that aren't, but... Uh... Oh, there's one of my dune buggies. I love these little guys. The, they're the Edrotes species. And they play dead too. I was, ooh, I wiggled my, that's not what I meant to do. I, I disturbed this little, little uh, velvet ant here, which I did not mean to do. And then I picked her up and moved her, which is probably not very nice either. I should have thought about that. I'm not thinking perhaps very clearly today, but she's a lovely little one that Peter Bugs in Cyberspace sent me. And Miller, yes, they are velvet ants. There's a couple of different species in here. There's uh, Thazimutilla vestita in the back. Oh, Novsky's here. Nice to see you here. Excellent and welcome. There, and I've got hmm, three or four species of velvet ant here. There's Thazimutilla nocturna and Thazimutilla occidentalis. Is asleep. <laughs> she was just moving around a minute ago. She's not dead. Believe me. Uh, this little guy. 
who may decide to move around for us. They will feign death as well, the little dune buggies. We've got a, got a couple of those in here. So, um, Cedric, are you wondering about the species of velvet ant, if they can interbreed? Pretty sure that the velvet ants cannot interbreed with one another. There are a lot of different species of velvet ants, and some look a lot like one another, but in many cases that's a type of Mullerian mimicry. So can you think of anything 3D printable that would be useful for a velvet ant desert beetle community to earn? Yeah, actually. Someone sent me one, and I'll show you. Show you it. Show you what they sent me. They sent me this little shelter, which uh, the velvet ants use. And... Uh, It's, it's pretty cool. It's got these little chambers underneath it. And then the velvet ants use it, especially the Occidentalis. She loves it. She's always in there when she's not out and about. That's her favorite hiding place. So yeah, um, 3D, 3D printed thing that's useful for this kind of situation. I've seen beetles hiding in it too. And fearless. The only time I was ever stung by a velvet ant, I was not keeping it. It was a... Out in the wild, when I was a kid, I was about 10 years old, and I picked one up and was bothering it. I think I had some sort of suspicion of what it was, having read about it, and thought, ooh, what if I can make it stridulate, and I did, and thereafter, I was stung. And Linda, yes, the red and the white things are indeed velvet ants, which are not true ants, they're a type of wingless wasp. The females are wingless, the males have wings, and that's, yeah, that's what they are. Sorry, didn't mean to put my finger in the way. And the uh, the fluffy things that are sitting there that are parts of the plant, those are actually creosote pods. But there are ants that look a lot like creosote pods. The one right in the front of the screen there is a an ant. And then right up above it, which is now in the center of the screen, is a creosote pod. So there, it turns out they're not actually mimicking them, although it looks like they do but they're not. The white is apparently an adaptation to being able to stay active in the desert longer, to forage longer, because it helps uh, resist the heat, reflecting the sun. And Dapper. Oh, so glad to hear you have uh, come to our channel. It's pretty fun. That is, that's a great thing that you're doing. I uh, have been doing that for a while now, and I really, really am glad I did. So welcome Dapper, and keep your eyes peeled for more work with Clint. Clint and I recently got together, and projects that you will be seeing more of shortly. So, yeah, Newt, um, actually, uh, I can totally see why you would think that, because they do look a lot like them. But when I uh, was down in southern Utah looking for... This species, Dazimutilla gloriosa, the species right there, this velvet ant, um, I saw some of these creosote pods and thought, oh, that would be fun to bring a couple of those home and keep them with the velvet ants if I find any. So I did. And so you get to see how strikingly similar they look. And when a little ant is running across the desert floor, it looks like a little creosote pod being blown in the wind. It's crazy. Uh, so the velvet ants... Um, some of them come from different places, like the large Occidentalis that I showed a minute ago. That one belongs, well, came from someone back east. I think it was South Carolina. The, uh, this one came from Peter at Bugs in Cyberspace, and it only occurs in the southwest. Some of these come from my state. This species was collected here in my state. Uh, there are other species I've collected. Let's see. Um, Desimutilla vistita, which is this one. Desimutilla... Occidentalis? No, not Occidentalis. What am I thinking? Bioculata and uh, Timula velvet ant species here in my state, and there are others that occur here as well uh, in Utah. But uh, a lot of these didn't come, and the Gloriosa occurs in my state, but I didn't collect these. My cousin, who is a, a velvet ant specialist in the sense that he does professional work uh, with velvet ants and publishes academic papers on them, He's an evolutionary biologist with a focus on entomology. So that's kind of his thing, especially velvet ants and other bees and wasps. He focuses on that. And uh, he gave them to me when he was done with a research project. Uh, let's see, Cedric. 
How do you think the isopod hobby will evolve in the next years? Can we hope to see more new species? I think we will see more new species. Are there some isopods you know about that can't be captive bred? I don't really know about any isopods that can't be captive bred. Um, I would say we probably will see some more species. Regulations will probably change. I'm hoping the regulations will relax a little bit, especially about the tropical species that can't establish themselves in temperate areas. I'm hoping that will eventually happen. Um, so those are some of the things. Yeah, we're going to get more morphs too, a lot more morphs, I think. So Theropod Hunter, you're right. Uh, there is, and I think Armadillo, Armadillo officinalis is a species that stridulates, a species of isopods that stridulates. And, and dapper, yeah, well, Moria worms are cool. They're active, they're interesting, they're uh, not difficult to, to raise, so I think that's a good one. So Lawson's animals, rubber duckies are fun in that they're very cool pattern-wise. I'm going to show you one more thing before we... Uh, I need to end the stream in a second, but I want to show you one more thing while we're talking about this, okay? Uh, let me put this back on the stand. And I'm going to show you this here. Not a big white blank thing. No, that's not what I meant. Um, what I meant was these are a high yellow strain of Armadillidium vulgari that was isolated in from specimens collected. Look at all these springtails. Specimens collected in Great Britain. And like mine, I think this one obviously doesn't look like it has high yellow at all. But some of the specimens do. And this one almost looks like a yellow version of Punta Cana, which is pretty cool. And uh, so I wanted to just kind of point those out. Look at this one. Isn't that a cool looking ice pot? It's almost like a cross between Punta Cana and Magic Potion. And these are breeding for me. You can see some little juveniles there running around. So pretty soon I'm going to need to move these into a different bin. Uh, I put them in these small 24 ounce bins to start them out a lot of the time because it seems to be a good way to get a culture started. And once it's thriving, you move it and all of the substrate into the larger culture with along with some more substrate. And then you don't have to worry about it being too small. So rubber duckies are secretive. They're super cool, but they're secretive. So they, they're, they're not terribly difficult or easy to keep. As long as you keep them moist enough and not too uh, cool, they seem to do well. <coughs> and Miller Madison. Excellent. I'm glad I was able to help further your passion for isopods. That's awesome. Brent to low. Welcome back and yellow thing do you have armadillidium verneri i don't have that one yet want that uh, species at some point if i can get it but i don't think it's on my permit now so until i'm able to get it on my permit i probably won't won't have it sorry about the balance there but that's a pretty cool uh variant or morph of armadillidium vulgari i think well thanks for joining in everybody it's about time for me to to quit but i appreciate you all coming and uh, hope to uh, catch you soon. I will have another live stream on Tuesday and then a normal video coming out on next Friday. So everybody stay safe and stay healthy.